Welcome back to Wotan and welcome aboard the Spitfire Mark 5 B. And this is the new model, not the tropical version that we have in the game since the beginning, I guess. And it's a beautiful plane. Now, some long-term viewers of my channel might be a bit surprised that I actually, in the beginning, lose some friendly words about a Spitfire. Whoa. I will just come back to this in a moment. First of all, this is a bit of a casual gameplay, nothing really special, but I had fun. It was okayish in the tension department, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But first, let's have a look at the beautiful model of this plane and how the propeller spins and how the... Okay, P47D balances our team. Um, jokes aside, if you look at the graphics of the propeller, doesn't it remind you um, like it looks on the TAR 152C3? Yeah. And so, I like the plane, um, the elliptical wings, the gun arrangement, the armament and so forth. So this is now the time around Easter and so I have to also go back home to my family in the upcoming days. That means I need to get some video out there and usually I wanted to prepare more videos, better videos. However, a lot of the test shooting happened, a lot of the high tier gameplay that I wanted to do were, was problematic because of the queue times, because of um, the internet connection not working properly again. Um, and well, some health issues, like I had some really, really intense pain in the stomach. Um, you know, six hours of pain and then it was gone, nobody knows why, and yeah, something like this. It prevented me from making the usual amount of content. And so I thought to myself, well, what can I give to my subscribers in, you know, to not have like a one, one week break from my videos? Um, you're used to more or less daily content. And if I have even a non-uploading day for one day, people get mad and, <gasps> has he died? And, <laughs> okay, this is a bit exaggerating, but <laughs> um, some people get really, really mad when I don't upload. Uh <laughs> when you think about it, it's, it's kind of amusing because they don't pay me. Just saying. Uh, all your content is more or less free, or all my content is relatively free. Uh, except for some advertisement and most of you buggers use ad blockers anyway so don't scream at me if i don't upload for a day uh, the community is fun at times so back to the battle so first of all i wanted to kind of talk about the spitfire mark 5b and um, i think it's uh, not just a very good looking plane and an iconic plane it's in general having still the early spitfire feeling for me so it is a dedicated turn fighter and while you can do some boom and zooming you really have to watch your speed and the long dive and to not rip your wings it's not that difficult to work around it but you are well you're not a p47 and the p47 is the plane that made the grind and also the you know spading process of this plane surprisingly difficult especially the german premium p47 get spammed out a lot since we saw a certain video on YouTube. Funnily enough, it was not mine. And since then, you just don't face one or two of those planes uh, on a German team, but four, five, I saw even seven German P-47s on one team. And they went in aggressively. And if you think about the P-47, it has no place whatsoever in the current state um, at that battle rating, it can easily fight 5.0s, easily. So the thing with the P47 is it has massive head-on firepower with very good trajectory, big damage output, a lot of ammunition. The plane itself is tanky, so it can also withstand the damage in a head-on, you know, a radial engine versus an inline engine. It has the speed, the energy retention, the climb rate, even an air spawn and even some ground pounding potential. Yes, even the German one without rockets and bombs. And the same goes for the Soviets, although Soviet players don't seem to like the P-47 that much. Which is surprising um, because it is a straightforward plane, uh, very good in most situations. And 
yeah, the P47 also has a surprising amount of agility that most people don't associate with uh, a P47. I'm not saying it's a turn fighter, but under certain circumstances, it's a good, um, how to say it, energy fighter. And this is why I personally recommended the P47 in the past, before even we saw that great buff to the 50 cals and so forth. And now we can see that also we are in the turn fighting and I baited an LA7 to focus on me and another Spitfire came in and shredded him in a head-on with very well aimed shots and didn't receive a scratch in return. Remember a lot of the Soviet aircrafts have uh, nose mounted 20mm cannons with good trajectory and good damage output and high fire chance and so forth. So this is why I don't want to really go into a head-on with this LA-5, but he is concentrating on the Hellcat, flies on, it's an LA-5 and fantastic aircraft, somebody came from the rear and I dodged it. And I was lucky that the Yak-9U didn't hit me. So um, yeah, in, in fact it's more difficult to be honest to fight the um, Germans at the moment with their premium aircraft. TA-154, then also the Heinkel 219 and also furthermore the BV-238 and the German P-47 in particular are an absolute nightmare for you to face. While you have decent firepower in the shape of 220mm with 120 rounds and also 1400 rounds for the four wing mounted machine guns, the 7.7s, which are more effective than some people might want you to believe. It doesn't have the oomph that other aircraft have, and yet that was again a very professional expression. The thing is, you are very good in a turn fight to get those deflection shots in with your wing mounted cannons. In a head on, in a jousting, some sort of engagement, you're not that good. Other aircraft are better. And this is why I love the first Spitfires the Mark I, the Mark IIb and the Mark V's, all of them, because they are still having, well, they are good enough to make it for a challenge and they have their strength, but they also have their dedicated weakness. I love some sort of plane like this, but there is a great contrast, for example, to when I ranted about b 409s and Focke Wolves, because they are so easily outplayed by every opponent that they face. Like, for example, this LA-5 is complaining about the ground, for example. OP trees, yeah, and I get some good hits into the I-185, but now I'm out of cannon rounds and I'm down to 400 machine gun rounds. And you can see there are a lot of Soviet aircraft still around, we still have to uh, deal with them, but there are just three enemies left and as many players of my team, so yeah. Now we have to work together and um, well, we have now two P-47s left and another plane and a Yak-9 and an I-185 are following one of them. So I need to um, interfere here, but I want to get some energy. I want to get some energy back into my system. So I climb a little bit and a turn fighter that is above you is really hard to come by in another turn fighter or a energy fighter or boom and zoom or whatsoever. So this is something that I try to do and I actually don't think that uh, the plane that is pursued on my team actually has enough speed and distance to um, get away from the Yak-9 which now is pitching up. So that is usually a sign that he's too close and now he's boom and zooming a P-47 which has in this case no way to run. Again, P-47 very very good plane but far from being invincible or overpowered and unbeatable but they make it extremely extremely difficult and it's so easy to say that they're overpowered which if you face a pure team of them they basically are so it's really difficult to make your um, straight argumentation but nevertheless let's engage them now it's a two versus two and i want to make it into a three versus two and a uh, good candidate is the i-185 to shoot at but i also don't want to lose the yak 9 out of the sight and just as i shoot a small burst 
he goes into a turn giving me a good deflection shot and I get a critical hit into him and now I want to energy trap him here a little bit and he has a smoke trail so that means oh yeah that was the problem with a turn fight that now the yak 9 came in and the yak 9 you just missed me barely but I have enough turning capabilities and you could see I used here the landing flaps because there are no dedicated um, combat flaps and if you're too fast you will rip them off very very quickly so the yak 9 also goes into a turn and I get the kill on the I-185 with just a good burst of 7.7s so he went down and the yak 9 u well he tries to go into several head-ons he's now a, having a 3 versus 1 so he's the last player alive and so he goes into a turn again I'm down to 230 machine gun rounds that was not enough lead sadly enough he goes into a head-on with a P47 and both trade equally and at this point in time that trade was beneficial for our team and much welcome one problem with the early Spitfires is now their overheating issues and uh, the Spitfires that I always complained about were the Mark 9s and the uh, ongoing Griffin Spitfires because they didn't leave an awful lot um, for the enemy because they were better at boom and zooming, climbing and intercepting than dedicated other nations interceptors and uh, boom and zoomers and also were better in turn fighting as well. But this one is a challenge, especially with power creep that also happened at lower tiers. So let's have a look at the results. By the way, if you remember a few days ago I gave the Mega 3 a tier 5 $50 premium tank for the Americans another go, had 9 kills, 2 capture zones and won the game with a premium account and a premium status of the vehicle and got around about 80,000 silver lines. In this one I got over 70,000 with a non-premium aircraft and 6,000 research points for the Spitfire Mark 5B. So just to talk here about the tank income here for a little bit. Nevertheless, uh, the plane is beautiful. I love the look of it. I love the new model of it, but it brings nothing unusual to the game and uh, at this point in time one has to say thanks for no further power creep gaijin so yeah that's it for me today i hope you enjoyed this more lean back video of mine and uh, to go a bit away from the test shooting and um, you know the high tier stuff for at least one video so thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed the video please give it a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields and in the skies of War Thunder.